we've talked before about cough and cold and it's getting to be uh, fall and winter and so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about one specific virus that you may hear a lot about, especially if you have a young child, called RSV. And that stands for respiratory syncytial virus. And that name is just given to it based on what the virus is known to do kind of in the lungs. Um, the reason we care about RSV is because it actually can make young infants very sick, especially premature babies. Um, RSV has a seasonality to it, so it typically occurs between October to November, uh, and then the season uh, runs through the late fall, winter, into the early spring, usually into March or April. Um, RSV can occur any time throughout a year, but most cases tend to occur in that time. And so what are the symptoms of RSV? Well, RSV is basically just the very worst cold you've ever gotten if you are an older child or adult. It gives you tons of nasal congestion, maybe some fever. Um, and if you're older, you can just blow your nose. It's not a big deal. In younger infants, RSV can cause not just what we call upper respiratory tract disease, so that's that stuffy nose or a little cough, can actually get down into the lungs and cause lower respiratory infection. And that's actually what makes small children sick. Small children obviously have much smaller airways than we have. When RSV gets into the lungs, it causes a large amount of mucus production. That mucus starts to plug up the very small airways in their lungs and starts to actually make it harder and harder for them to get air in and out. And so small children who have RSV can start to develop what we call increased work of breathing, and that's retractions. They're pulling really hard. Sometimes you can see them pull under their ribs or in between their ribs. You can see their nostrils flaring as they're trying to get air in, and they can actually be working really hard to get a normal amount of air. Um, for small children, sometimes just suctioning the nose to clear those really thick secretions, that really thick mucus will help. But if you do that and you still see your child having difficulty breathing or you're seeing them or hearing them wheeze, um, that is time to go get seen by a doctor for certain. And unfortunately, RSV, because it's a virus, doesn't have any good medications that we can give you to make the virus go away. Our job as doctors is to support infants through their illness. Because of that increased uh, trouble breathing, because of all that mucus, a lot of infants will have a much harder time eating while they're sick. And so they can develop dehydration. So sometimes they may need an IV for IV fluids. Some children with RSV, because they have all that extra mucus production in the lungs, it's similar to the uh, what we call pathophysiology, so the, the uh, process that goes on with asthma, some children actually will respond to the same sorts of medications we would give an asthmatic child. So they may try a nebulizer treatment in the emergency room. Um, if your child responds to that, you, they may actually send you home with an inhaler or a nebulizer machine. Occasionally, children will have lower oxygen levels when they have RSV. They may need to be in the hospital just for oxygen to keep them safe until the virus passes. Usually RSV uh, is worst on the third, fourth, to fifth day of the illness. So most children will start just like adults with mostly upper respiratory symptoms, stuffy nose, maybe a small cough. And usually what will happen is that will start to progress over the second to third to fourth day. And on the third to fourth day is when we will usually start to see that was what was initially just a stuffy nose is becoming a deeper cough, maybe some more work of breathing, um, and maybe some wheezing. Usually by the fifth day, wherever they are, that's the worst they're gonna get, and they'll start to improve. So if your child is on the fourth or fifth day of an RSV illness, and they're still happy and eating and not having fevers, you should only expect them to get better. Um, Again, there is no treatment specifically for RSV, so it's not necessarily important that we know every child who has it. Um, if your child has it, though, it allows the doctors to give you a sense of uh, how long you should expect them to be ill, and they know to watch out for that lower respiratory tract symptoms. So if you have a young infant in the house, they have a really bad stuffy nose or fever, it's a good idea to be seen by the doctor so they can decide if they want to test for RSV or not. Um, if your child ends up in the hospital, uh, hopefully it will only be a couple of days uh, that you have to stay there, but some children will need oxygen for even up to a week uh, as their lungs heal themselves. RSV can give children a higher risk for wheezing uh, with other viral infections in the first few years of life, so that's something that your doctor can talk to you about. Again, we would treat those children just like we would treat a kid with asthma. We basically give them an inhaler to use when they need it. Uh, but that's not necessarily an indication that your child would be um, an asthmatic for the rest of their lives. 
If you have a premature infant, so an infant who was born before 35 weeks, uh, and this is their first season, they're less than uh, six months to one year of age, and it's RSV season, talk to your doctor about something called Synergis. Uh, that's actually a preventative medicine that we use only in premature infants uh, who are y very young at the time of RSV season to help prevent them from getting RSV. We don't use it in older children because we don't find that it helps enough uh, that we would need to give them an injection every month uh, during the RSV season. So I hope this answers some of your questions about RSV. I hope you make it through the season without your child getting it, but if you do, maybe now you have a little information to help direct your care. MedTwice.com